Good morning, everyone. Today I'm joined by Eva Rosen, Assistant Professor in our McCourt School of Public Policy, and Brian McCabe, Associate Professor of Sociology in the Georgetown College. And Eva and Brian recently co-authored a report entitled Eviction in Washington, D.C., Racial and Geographic Disparities in Housing Instability. And today we'll have a chance to discuss their findings in that report and hear from them about issues of housing and equity in D.C. and beyond. So Eva and Brian, thank you so much for being here today. I'm grateful to have this opportunity to learn more about your research this morning and for the expertise you bring to our academic community. And last month, you re released a report on evictions here in the District of Columbia, which analyzed eviction filings in our city from 2014 to 2018. I'd like to ask you about your findings in that report, but first, before we get into that, I'd like to ask you what drew you to this topic in particular? Why is this an urgent topic now? And Eva, if I can turn to you and then to Brian. Sure, thank you so much for having us today, President DeJoya. So yeah, um, eviction was an urgent topic even before the pandemic. Um, we both study housing and we really think that stable housing is just at the foundation of so many of the things that we care about in the world. Um, having a stable home is associated with better health outcomes, better mental health outcomes. It helps kids do better in school and it helps people keep jobs and get better paying jobs. Um, and of course, on the flip side, housing instability disproportionately affects folks of color and people who are low income and it really exacerbates inequality. So even before the pandemic, this is something that, um, that we cared a lot about uh, and, and things have only gotten worse now. Thank you, Eva. Ryan? Yeah, I would add to, to that, that when we look in um, DC specifically, we see a sort of growing housing crisis in this city. Um, we see that rents are rising and incomes are stagnant. Um, we see that half of DC renters are rent burdened. They pay more than 30% of their income um, towards the cost of housing. And these rent burdened households are concentrated in um, Ward 7 and Ward 8, right? Communities east of the river, um, communities with lower incomes than other places in the city. So, so I think um, even above and beyond our, our general concern with housing and the importance of housing for um, family stability and economic and emotional well-being, um, we see some specific problems in our community that we were able to, to think about and start to address with our report. And can you share more about your findings in this report? What has your report, report taught us about eviction in DC? And Brian, perhaps I can turn to you first. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so as you mentioned, uh, President DeJoya, we used um, administrative records from the court. And so we were able to identify all of the evictions or eviction filings that had taken place between 2014 and 2018. So um, just to, to share a couple of the kind of top line filings that I, top, top line headlines that I think are really important. So each year in Washington, D.C., um, there are about 30,000 eviction filings, right? And what that means is that one out of every nine renter households or about 11% of renters experience an eviction filing every year. So really a tremendous number of people are impacted by this process. And the vast majority of these filings, about 93% of them are for non-payment of rent, right? So this means that um, people aren't getting eviction filings for anything other than the fact that rents are really not affordable, right? And, and families are having trouble um, paying their rent. Um, we find though that most of these filings actually don't even result in an executed eviction, right? For the most part, overwhelmingly, um, cases are dismissed, families end up paying their, um, their rent, uh, they're dismissed by the, the landlord before it goes to the eviction process. In fact, only about 5% of cases actually ends in an executed eviction, right? That sort of dreaded moment when, um, when the, the marshal service comes to your house um, to, to, to sort of kick you out of, of your home. Um, but, but the thing that we want to emphasize and we do in our, our op-ed in the post last weekend was that um, even just the, the receiving of a filing, right, um, it's entered into the court records, it's on the tenant records, and when landlords see this, it's a red flag for, for finding housing in the future. So, um, so one thing that we sort of ask readers to pay attention to is the importance of, of just the eviction filing and to really make that point that it's incredibly prevalent um, for families throughout the district. So I think those are a couple of the, the kind of key findings. Eva, um, Brian just mentioned that following the report, you together wrote an opinion piece for the Washington Post about 
what you see as the issues with the eviction process here in DC. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what are some of the policy recommendations that you would make based on your scholarship? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and we were really lucky that, um, that throughout this process, we've been in a dialogue with the DC City Council who's been really in interested to hear what we found. Um, and towards the end, as we were getting uh, ready to publish the report, they actually reached out and we were able to give them an informal presentation of our findings. Um, and they were actually able to incorporate them and, and uh, go ahead and make uh, and pass some emergency measures um, that, that were really in line with some of the recommendations we had. Our policy recommendations are really focused on keeping people out of court at, whenever possible. Um, and that's for the reason that Brian was talking about that filings in and of themselves are quite damaging to tenants. So we really think that it's too easy for landlords to misuse filing. And one of the solutions that we have for that is to suggest raising the filing fee. So the council has gone ahead and, uh, and made a recommendation to the courts that they, that they raise the filing fee. The filing fee in DC is currently about $15. Um, in other cities of similar sizes, it tends to be closer to around $100 to file for eviction. So um, we really think it's just too easy for landlords to do this. Um, we've also suggested a ban on evictions for small sums of money. So we found that 12% of filings are for sums that are under $600. Um, and the council passed an emergency measure to go ahead and just ban evictions for such small sums. Um, so those are two things that, are, that we think are really important. We also really advocate for record sealing um, and for record sealing as soon as filings are made. Um, and this protects tenants so that their names don't go into the database so that landlords can't use these filings um, and these records to discriminate against tenants when they're going to, tr to try to find housing in the future. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, can you talk a little bit about what it was like to collaborate on this project? What different perspectives were you able to bring together as collaborators and scholars? Yeah, uh, I think that even I've been very lucky to work together on this project. And, um, and I'll say we have a number of um, future projects that have sort of come out of this that are about housing. We're, um, we're putting together an edited volume on the sociology of housing. Um, we're going to start really soon on an analysis of the emergency rental assistance program. So, um, so this project, I think, has built for both of us kind of the foundation to continue doing work on housing and housing policy together. Um, I think there are a number of ways in which our sort of collaboration works very well, right? My background is mostly as a um, quantitative researcher with experience working on administrative data. Um, previous work has been mostly on housing and home ownership. Um, and Eva has done a lot of work studying um, landlords and their eviction practices and is mostly a qualitative researcher, right? So, um, so one of the joys of being a sociologist is that we um, sort of bring qualitative and quantitative methods to the study of social problems. And I think Eva and I together are a good example of of what happens when you bring a sort of qualitative mind and a quantitative mind, right, to, to, this, to this puzzle. Um, we got to work with a, a lot of students in this, in this process. When we were um, adding up our thank yous for the report, I think there were more than 15 students who, who touched this, this research project from um, collecting and coding data, downloading court records and coding them for us, um, analysis of some of the data, um, researching policies in other cities, um, doing some proofreading. So sort of across the gamut, we had this great army of undergraduate researchers that were coding evict eviction records, um, McCourt students that were overseeing this operation and doing um, various other pieces of research, and a really terrific PhD student from the government department that helped us crunch a lot of the numbers for the final report. And so what we were able to do is, you know, sort of um, create this great team that was interested in, in working on this. And, and I think we also learned a lot from our students. One of the things that we told them in the research process is that we want you to be more than somebody that just enters numbers into a spreadsheet, right? When you see patterns, we want you to ask us about them. Or um, when things seem to be sort of striking to you, let's look at it further, right? And so it was a, a way to incorporate students into the research process in a way that both kind of got them the, the nitty gritty, like how is research, how is policy research done? But I think it also allowed them to ask questions that we were together able to, to continue looking at. Thank you. Eva, anything, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I think what I would add to that is that um, for Brian and I, our vision of, of at least part of our, um, uh, of our mission here at Georgetown is to um, 
is to think about DC as a, as a place where people live, right? Not just as a place that is the home of our government, of our country, but as a place where everyday people live and struggle um, and make do with what they have. And so um, part of our goal is to help students do that as well, um, to get students off campus, to get them to think about what it's really like to, to live in DC, to be born in DC, um, and how the city has changed over time. And so we were really excited to be able to include students on this project. Several of them came forward and said, you know, part of why I wanted to work on this project was that my family was evicted when I was a kid. And so to be able to include students who have that experience and to help them see DC in a different way um, is definitely part of our motivation for the project. So we were really thrilled to be able to include them all at different stages. Thank you, thank you. And we know that evictions can be closely tied to issues of justice. And the challenge of COVID-19 has made stable housing that much more of an important issue for communities. What would you say to someone who wants to get involved in conversations about housing stability in their community, either here in DC or, or elsewhere? Yeah, I think that's right. And, and actually one of the findings we didn't mention earlier was that 60% um, of all the filings in DC, um, as well as all of the 60% of all of the evictions take place in wards seven and eight, which are wards that have been hard hit by COVID are predominantly um, uh, inhabited by folks of color and, and people who are low income. Um, and so this really is uh, an issue of many different types of justice, racial justice, economic justice. Um, the first thing I would say is to is to get out of your dorm and um, and go explore the city, right? Go to a neighborhood association meeting in a neighborhood that's far away from from Georgetown. Get a feel for what it's like. Um, volunteer for one of the many uh, organizations we have that work on these issues: Bread for the City, Legal Aid Society, right? And a lot of students do this already. In fact, for a lot of students, this is why they come to Georgetown: is is to is to have internships and experiences in these types of organizations. But I think getting out of your comfort zone, right? And, and going ex and exploring a neighborhood that you haven't been to. I know Brian does this a lot with his classes, right? Um, field trips, right? And, and so it's really important to, um, to get out of the bubble and, and just learn a little bit about what the city's really like. Thank you, Eva. Brian? Yeah, I, and I would add to that. I mean, I think um, as sociologists, we're really invested in understanding how social processes and social institutions work. Um, I remember the first time I went to eviction court was with a student of ours. Um, Eva and I were, were supervising a, a senior thesis that was on um, eviction court and kind of hidden procedures in eviction court. And I, I went to court with Isaiah and he had spent hundreds of hours in court, right? And so he understood this process, what was going on in ways that um, I didn't understand at all when I went to eviction court for the first time. And so I think that there's, um, there's real value in kind of getting your hands dirty in this process, whether it's showing up the court, at court or volunteering, as Eva said, um, to really understand how it works or digging into data, right? To, to think about what the what data are telling us about these processes that the more that, um, that you can sort of get involved in the process, the better understanding we have and the better understanding we have, the more able we are to, to sort of craft and recommend policies, right? That promote racial justice, um, that create economic justice and fairness in the city. Oh, thank you, thank you both. And thank you for sharing this exceptional work with us and for all that, all that you mean to our community. In closing, is, is there a word you'd like to share with our community? Brian, yeah. why don't you go yeah. first? Sure. Um, you know, Eva and I are, um, are, are building out what we hope will be an urban lab at Georgetown, um, a place where, um, you know, this is one kind of project where we were able to do really policy relevant and influential research to bring in students to liaise with members of the um, advocacy community to talk to the city council. And our hope is that through the urban lab, we, we're able to sort of build up beyond that, right, to, to find community groups that are interested in working with us, um, to think about other um, other other topics. So it's maybe it's fair election financing, maybe it's emergency rental assistance, maybe it's sort of landlord programs in the city, but places where we can do research that's policy relevant, that's about our city. I mean, there's a great tradition in sociology and especially in kind of um, the Chicago School of Sociology, right, where um, the city is sort of used to understand these phenomenon, right, city as a lab. And so um, I think that we want to build up this urban lab so it becomes um, the kind of place where, where we study a lot of things that are relevant to our city and then we do a lot of policy relevant work. Thank you, Brian. Eva? 
Yeah, I would really just echo what, what Brian said. Um, it is certainly our goal to um, get out there in the world, get students out um, into the city and to, um, again, just think about DC as a, as a place where, uh, where people live and are, are trying to make ends meet um, and, to, and to learn about it. Um, so I, I'm not sure I can say it any better than he did, but. Oh, well, thank you. Again, thank you both for taking the time to speak with us today. And it's been wonderful to be in conversation with you. And I look forward to being with all of you again soon. Take care of yourselves and take care of everyone around you for every Hoya everywhere.